I want. Now, glow, you want to make your hem, okay? So, again, just like before, um, Hadzi Loza, Ale, eyeball it. Um, like I said, I like to use this selvaged edge because it gives you a guide of where to fold it for your hem. There's two ways to do it, tall ways. You can just iron it or you can pin it. I found that ironing works just as good, but if you want to, you can go in and pin it. Wall, tall. So it should just fold right over itself because you want to be able to catch both sides with your machine. It should just fold right over. If you want to. So you're just creating your hem. So just keep kind of pulling the fabric and letting the machine pull it through. And I just kind of say words to myself as, as I'm doing it, like reminding myself. On a hobo, your fabric ost. So you're going to do the same thing you did on the bottom, except this time you're going to go half inch. You're going to fold it over just like you did last time, except this time you're going to do a half inch. And then and when you fold it over again, instead of just kind of eyeballing it and getting it the same all the way around, you want to make sure that you do an inch and a half if you've got one inch elastic. Okay, if you have two inch elastic or smaller, just take the size of your elastic, elastic, if it's two inch, if you like a really thick elastic, um, give yourself two and a half inches of the fold over. inch. It's easy to want to add in little syllables here or there when you're used to saying certain words, but he taste da, iron it. D tasty ha. Makes me laugh every time. 
Sounds like you're doing something tasty. Oh goodness, y'all. Don't mind me. But you can see how the word changes. You know, I'm telling you, all right, to iron it. He tastes up. He tastes up. You iron it. Z tasty, huh? I'm ironing. So you can see how the word kind of changes from one person to the other. You start noticing those changes, and it helps you to be able to talk about more people. A one, no glow, show, glow, show. Show, glow, show, one more time. Inch and a half. Hotsy loza, hotsy loza. Inch and a half. So you have your casing, okay, but you want to make sure that with your casing that you leave a little opening for your elastic to go in. So I take Yunky, Yunky, a little needle, and I mark tall spots. Just about an inch, maybe a little more if you want a little more wiggle room, okay? But you want to leave that little opening so that you can take your elastic and weave it through your casing. So what you're going to do is sew, all the way around, but leave that open. Always back stitch and then forward stitch. Holly we star, holly we star. Right there. Back stitch. So you have your measurement for your waist, for yourself, or whoever you're making it for. I, uh, um, Agueji, um, I'm making it for my little girl, for my child. So her measurement, Toshko, Toshko Nunk, Toshko Nunk, but remember, the elastic is stretchy. So since I don't have her here, I'm going to stretch it. Toshko Nunk. Toshko. Uh, Toshko Shoodle. Toshko Shoodle. Higaluya. Safety pin. Oh, wow. So this is so you don't lose your elastic in your casing. Uh, Ustoga. Pin it through. Okay. So find your opening. And you're just going to take it through. So you can feel that safety pin in there. You're just gonna pull it through. Anaklavo, ost, yunky, So you also wanna make sure that you don't pull this tail all the way through. You gotta leave a little opening for it, or a little left, so that you have something to sew together. So I lost my tail. So I tend to just try to hold one end as I'm working it through so that I don't pull it through and completely lose one end. Because I like to make um, my skirts for my little ones, and even sometimes for myself, um, a little bit bigger than what you need it. So as they grow, the skirt can grow with them. Because all you have to do 
is take a seam ripper, find where your little hole for your elastic is, and change out the elastic. And then it's like a brand new skirt and they can keep wearing it. So you want to pull it through, pull it out. So you want to pull your elastic out and you want to overlap it. That's why you kind of went a little bit further. Like when you stretched it out, I gave 12 inches to my elastic so that I can sew it together. So I'm going to overlap it and I'm going to use a, I'm not going to use a straight stitch. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. Um, this allows your elastic to be able to move without popping your seam or your, um, your aust inside your elastic. So just like you did with your seam, you're going to forward stitch, back stitch, forward stitch, squeeze stuff. I do squished it anyways because I don't want it to um, snap. <laughs> That's like a biggest fear. <laughs> so I do it in two places. Some people um, make a nump zunashi, a box out of it. I just do tall ostinona. I just do two lines. See? And now it is stuck together. Now Guo, you have this opening, yeah? And you have to get it close. So make sure you take off of your zigzag stitch, go back to your straight stitch. You're gonna stretch your, your elastic out just at this spot. You kinda, cause you want it, you want it flat so that it's not sewn up all bunched up. So you pull your elastic So you're going to be able to find this. So if you decide that you want the elastic bigger or it needs to come smaller, like if you don't have your person that's trying it on, you can find the spot because you'll see the front stitch and the back stitch. You just take a seam ripper, pick it out, and then fix your elastic, re-put it back in, and make it fit better. Make sure that you don't um, sew over your elastic. Okay. Don't be too hard on yourself. This is your first time. Flip it over. And ta-da! Is it oosty? But you have your oosty ribbon skirt. Da-da-da! That's the quick version of how to make a ribbon skirt. <laughs> Do a little spin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop.